finish up the, uh, the ethics part of the class with an application in financial ethics. Okay, and I'm going to do a case study. Right? It's a live, live case study. It actually happened to me. It'll be kind of interesting to see what, what types of decisions you would, you would have made. It's not like Google or something like that, but it's a, it's a pretty big company. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so the company was publicly traded. Uh, the position I had. in the research department. Oh, and uh, the company had been around <clears throat> since 1960. And they had never had a research department before. Okay. And uh, when all of this went down, I had been with the company basically five years. support asset management like the COO <coughs> market research see how And development under the chief investment officer. <coughs> IT information systems under the director. Report <coughs> directly to the president. And I had a line to the board of directors. with 
investment in commercial bankers. And we do speaking engagements, industry organizational events. We also write research reports. Also produce quarterly forecasts. And those quarterly reports <coughs> would be made available to senior management. That is in the way of oh. the camcorder. No, it is okay. Yeah. There you go. All right. So I think that kind of gives you an idea of what the uh, roles and responsibilities that I had for the company. <clears throat> I would produce this quarterly report. This was one of the most important reports that were produced, they went out on a quarterly basis, they went out to senior management, and they went out to the board of directors, directly from me. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, one day, something happened. Uh, that changed everything. And that was not one. September 11th. When I woke up that day, I turned on the TV and I knew that everything had changed. Okay. <clears throat> Not necessarily that everything had changed forever, <clears throat> but I did know that too. But I knew that um, going into my job that day was going to be completely different. Okay. <clears throat> because I knew that this type of impact, historically, if you looked at these types of events, historically, they uh, resulted in a recession. Guaranteed. And as a researcher around business cycles, I knew we were going into a recession. And I think the uh, senior management knew, knew too that we were going to go into a recession too. So when I got to the my job, they asked me for my report because I was done. I had already. I was just getting ready to mail it out to the board. <clears throat> and they were asking me, and they go, well, give me, give us the report, send the, send the research report out, send the report out to the board of directors. And I said, um, no, because I think we need to do some changes because after 9-11, <clears throat> there was a major, had a major effect on the markets. And when the 9-11 event occurs, the whole capital market shuts down. There's no circular flow, there's no trades. There's no capital markets. It just shuts down. The whole thing seizes up. And that usually leads into a recession. So I said, I need to go back and redo the report. And they said, no, 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 no. You don't need to do that. You can just publish the report as is. And I said, well, I need a little bit more time to think about it. And they're going, no, no, no. Just, just give them the report. And I said, no, I need a couple more days to, to fix it. It took me about a week. So they were coming into my office every single day. Going, when are you going to send it out? Is it done yet? So I had to make a decision on what I was going to do because they were pressuring me to, to send out the report to the board of directors and senior management when basically everything had changed. So basically, I felt that I had an obligation to go back and rerun the forecasts based on a recession scenario because if you've never done any research, you know that 9-11 type events uh, will trigger a recession. So it's guaranteed it's going to come. <clears throat> So I had to figure out what I was going to do. So what did I do? I don't know. What would you do? So you 
had a couple decisions that she could make. So based on the pressure, I could have quit. Because I'm not going to send down a Aurelius report. Uh, two, I could work with senior management. modifications in the forecast uh, without some management. So I could quit, find another job. And I could work with senior management to modify the research in the forecast and then send it out to the board of directors. <clears throat> I could send out the report as is, so my prior report. Now, recession scenario. Send that out to the board. Or I could go back and modify the forecast and send it out under my own, um, my own uh, publishing <clears throat> as myself without um, time to see your management. So, what would you do? No, 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 they wanted, they wanted to do this. But is it four so, that they don't do it? Uh, four is send out the report with my modifications without senior management. Uh, but they wanted to help, but you said you do it by yourself. Uh, I'm not going to get into kind of the details okay. just yet. Or no, no number two. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I just go with number four because it seems like there's some kind of incentive for them to get it. Number um, two. to it first. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. There was an incentive by management to um, send out the original report because it basically would have made it look better. <clears throat> it probably would have propped up the stock price longer. It probably would have allowed them to exercise their call options uh, and be able to get out you know, with more money. <clears throat> No, I basically sent out the report. Uh, they were coming in. There was obviously something going on. You know, why they were pressuring me to publish a report that I knew was wrong. I mean, it's, you know, 9-11 hits. I mean, it's obvious if you're an economist. You know there's a recession coming. <coughs> and uh, so I knew there was something going on. Okay. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to quit. You know, because I have a moral responsibility to the company and the shareholders to produce the best research and the most accurate research, so that's not the point. <coughs> I could have worked with senior management, but um, actually I ended, up, I ended up working with senior management. They came back to me and they said, I cannot believe you sent out this report to the board of directors, you should be fired. And what we're going to do is you're going to work with us and you're going to modify the research. And we're going to help you, uh, tell you basically what the forecasts should be for the individual markets. We're going to tell you that. And you're going to publish a new report, and you're going to send it back to the board, too. So I ended up having to do that. And I knew that was going to happen. That's why I sent this one out first. And then they went back, and they made me uh, modify the, the research report. And then I refused to do this, because okay. I knew that was wrong. Okay. So what happened was the uh, uh, these guys, after a few years, this was 
was 9-11. I left in 2003. So maybe two and a half years later, roughly. So I had two and a half years before I left. About two and a half years later. Um, the new president. The new president. The, 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 the old uh, guys left. They took their money, money and ran, basically. <clears throat> and there was a new president that came in. And she was great. She had already, she had worked for the company before. Uh, and she basically said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll hire you back as a consultant for a couple grand a month. Because um, obviously your research is valuable. Uh, and what we want you to do is at our annual uh, board of directors meeting, uh, we want you to do a formal presentation to the board. And the presentation that we want to do is we want to show uh, your original forecast, so the research forecast, against the uh, management's modified forecasts against the actual performance. Because we have almost three years of uh, quarterly data from the actual portfolio that we could, that we could look at. <clears throat> and if you look at the markets, you know, I had a graph, I had a bunch of graphs, and you know, each of the individual markets were broken up by my original forecast, the actual forecast, Senior management's modified forecast. My forecast, market forecast, senior management's forecast. So in some of these markets, they actually had positive rank growth that they were telling me to show. And they were telling me to show uh, rental declines and revenue declines in some markets less than the actuals and my forecast. So the forecasts were just useless, in my view. There was no science behind it. It was just political pressure on senior management to make me produce a report to make things look better than they actually were. And they eventually did uh, lay, lay me off and got rid of me um, at some point. So <clears throat> you will probably be put in a position at some point in time. I mean, look at Enron and Arthur Anderson and <clears throat> some you know accounting and you know finance groups. Look at some marketing groups. You know, look at some management. Uh, you may be put in, in under pressure to do things um, that may be immoral or unethical. Then you have to kind of decide. You know, do I do it or do I not do it? You know, if I do it, uh, I still may get fired, right? Because they're gonna. I mean, just look at John stuff at Wells Fargo. We fired five thousand five hundred people for manufacturing two million accounts and took no responsibility and fired 5,500 people. Where senior management did not, said they didn't know, but I don't believe that. And obviously, they have no moral or ethical responsibility for the whole thing. So even though the employees were pressured into doing it based on management's policy, they ended up taking the fall for it. Okay. So you're going to you're gonna have to make those decisions. Do my, lose my job and make the right decision? Do I lose my job and make the right decision? Do I make the right decision and keep my job? We don't know what the outcomes are going to be. <clears throat> but again, you have to ask yourself at the end of the day. So I knew what I was vindicated by the president. I was able to do the presentation in front of the board of directors so that they saw that senior management behind me were the, were the culprits you know, in misinformation and miscommunication. Uh, to be hired back as a consultant was another validation, uh, although I think it was short-sighted uh, on the view of the company to get rid of me um, <clears throat> for marketing purposes and really for institutional investor interests. Uh, and then I went on and got a better job, basically. I found a better job. So any questions on that? You will definitely be confronted with uh, with some of these situations. Uh, so you left after two years, or did they let you off? Uh, they laid me off after two years, roughly two and a half years.
years because they couldn't just get rid of me, right? Because that would have been too too big of a deal. And institutional investors, and investment bankers, and brokers, and you know people who were in the marketplace would have said, "Well, what happened?" Right? I never said anything outside the firm because that's not none of their business. Uh, what really goes on? But again, you know, it was coming. And the CFO did come into my office and say, you know, you should be fired for producing that report and sending it to the board of directors. So I knew this was a matter of time. And then when you got your new job, like, what did you say? What, what had happened? No, I didn't talk about it. Like, I mean, they gave you recommendations? Yeah. Like that, recommendations. They gave me a severance. They gave me stock options. They gave me, <clears throat> they gave me a lot of stuff. And then he gave me the money back. And then obviously the president uh, vouched for me. Okay. And then people on the board vouched for me. So I had the credibility to be able to use them as references for any job that I went on to. And I felt pretty good about myself and I knew I was making the right decision. I mean, I just had to make the decision. There was no other decision. I wasn't going to send out a, you know, a Ronnie's report and I wasn't going to send out a report that was manipulated by management even though they forced me. They made me do it. They basically threatened me. So what, what could I do? But I had already sent out the report. So I felt <clears throat> that I was covered that way, that they knew um, what my project projections were originally. How am I doing on time? Um, five minutes. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, the, your, your careers are, and you can turn that off. <clears throat> careers are really long. 